The age of the Stirlungs or the Stirlung era was a 42- to 44-year period of internal strife in mid-13th century Iceland. It may have been the bloodiest and most violent period in Icelandic history. It is documented in the Stirlung saga. This period is marked by the conflicts of powerful chieftains, Gothar, who amassed followers and did battle, and is named for the Stirlungs the most powerful family clan in Iceland at the time. At the end of the era, the Icelandic Commonwealth ceased to exist and Iceland became a vassal of Norway. Historians generally regard the year 1220 as the first year of the age of the Stirlungs, although some wish to place its beginning at an earlier date because of the Battle of Vithinus. Power in the country had consolidated within the grasp of a few family clans. They were the Haukdalir of Arnasthing, the Odavijar of Rungarthing, the Asperninger of Skagafjurtha, the Vatinsfjordingar of Isafjurtha, the Svenfellingar of the Eastern Region, the Sturlungar of Havama in Dalir. At this time, Haken the Old, King of Norway, was trying to extend his influence in Iceland. Many Icelandic chieftains became his vassals and were obliged to do his bidding. In exchange they received gifts, followers and a status of respect. Consequently, the greatest Icelandic chieftains were soon affiliated with the King of Norway in one way or the other. Gothar. In the Icelandic Commonwealth, power was mostly in the hands of the Gothar. Iceland was effectively divided into farthings. Within each farthing were nine Gothi dominions. The North Farthing had an additional three dominions due to its size. All in all they were 39. The Gothi chieftains protected the farmers in their territory, and exacted compensation or vengeance if their followers' rights were violated. In exchange, the farmers pledged their support to the Gothi both by voting in his favour in the Aldingi parliament and by taking up arms against his enemies. The powers of the Gothi chieftains, however, were neither permanent nor inherited. This status came about by a combination of respect, honour, influence and wealth. The chieftains constantly had to demonstrate their qualities as leaders, either by giving gifts to their followers or by holding great feasts. If the chieftain was seen as failing in any respect, his followers could simply choose another, more qualified Gothi to support. The greatest chieftains of the 12th and 13th century started amassing great wealth and subsuming lesser dominions. This may be one of the causes of the civil war. Course of events Beginning the age of Stirlungs began in 1220, when Snorra Sturluson, chieftain of the Stirlung clan and one of the great Icelandic saga writers, became a vassal of King Haken of Norway. The king insisted that Snorra help him bring Iceland under the sovereignty of Norway. Snorra returned home, and although he soon became the country's most powerful chieftain, he did little to enforce the king's will. According to one historian, we do not know whether Snorri's inactivity was due to lack of will or his conviction that the case was hopeless. In 1235, Snorri's nephew Sturla Sivertsen also accepted vassalage under the king. Sturla was more aggressive. He sent his uncle back to Norway, and started warring on the chieftains who refused to accept the king's demands. However, Sturla and his father Sivachur were soundly defeated by Gish Thorvaldsson, the chief of the Haukdalir, and Kolbian the Young, chief of the Asperningers, in Orligstathir in Skagafjurtha. The Battle of Orligstathir was the largest armed conflict in the history of Iceland. The Sturlungs had 1,000 armed men and the Asperningar had 1,200 armed men. More than 50 people were killed. After this crushing defeat, Gish and Kolbian became the most powerful chieftains in the country. Snorra Sturluson returned home to Iceland, having fallen out of favour with the king due to his support for Earl Scully in an attempted coup. Gish Thorvaldsson, also a vassal of the Norwegian king, received instructions that Snorra be killed. In 1241, Gish went with many men to Snorri's home and murdered him. Snorri's last words are said to have been, Eigi Skalhogva, 
Thortha Karkali stirs up trouble a year later. Thortha Karkali Sivertsen, son of Sivachur, Snorri's brother, returned home to Iceland from abroad. He had cause for vengeance, for his brothers and father had fallen in the Battle of Orlegstathir. He soon showed himself to be a formidable tactician and leader. Four years later, the rule of the Aspernings was effectively over, after fierce battles with Thortha. The battles Floabardagi and the Battle of Horseness both take place during this period. Thortha Karkali and Gish Thorvaldsson, however, did not fight each other. Both were vassals of the King of Norway, and they appealed to him as dispute mediator. The king decided in favor of Thortha and from 1247 to 1250 Thortha ruled Iceland almost alone. He died in Norway, six years later. Gish returns and the Commonwealth ends in 1252 the king sent Gish to Iceland. The followers of Thortha Karkali were displeased and tried to kill him by putting his residence in Flugumirai in Skagafjortha to the torch. This incident is known as Flugumira Brenner. Despite his influence and power, Gish was unable to find the leader of the arsonists, and was forced to return to Norway in 1254 to bear the censure of the king who was displeased with his failure in bringing Iceland under the Norwegian throne. Minor conflicts continued throughout Iceland. Meanwhile, Gish was given the title of Jarl and sent home to negotiate. Only when the king had sent his special emissary, Halvartha Golskor, did the Icelanders agree on Norwegian kingship. The Commonwealth came to an end with the signing of the Gamli-Samali Agreement in 1264.